let the interview begin. Hello, welcome to the Nerds Podcast, and I'm here with Mike Dupree. Hi, Mike. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you, Adam. Yeah, you too. Thanks for giving up some of your time today. It means a lot. Not so. a problem. <laughs> so, obviously, I know you're into puppetry and ventriloquism. So, do you mind saying how you got into that? Yeah, brain damage, I would say, from an early <laughs> age. <laughs> no, it's, it's horrible. I really shouldn't say that. But, uh, no, I uh, as a child, I had a form of autism. Oh, okay. And uh, I was real shy and withdrawn. But uh, I started watching some ventriloquists on television. And I thought, wow, that was really cool looking back as a child yeah so my parents got me one of those small little jerry mahoney figures yeah. and uh yeah. dummies they call them and uh i wound up <clears throat> teaching myself how to do that and uh all through school and well into the service i was uh doing ventriloquism awesome nice cool so i recently found out you were in halloween kills the one that's yet to debut, obviously. So how did you come across that role? Well, a friend of mine actually posted online that they were looking for a ventriloquist that didn't have a Southern accent. And okay. uh, my buddy, he's got a Southern draw. So he was unable to uh, try out for it. Yeah. So he passed it off on me. And I thought, yeah, what the heck? And uh, the funny part was the movie, they didn't let you know what movie it was that uh, oh. you were trying out for. They uh, always use a production title yeah and it was uh mob rules oh, so uh, i figured yeah i'll i'll try it out and actually in england uh there was a movie in the 80s i believe that was called mob rules so i thought it was a remake of that oh. i thought yeah, it wasn't that great of a movie <laughs> but i tried out anyhow and i put together a uh, a little tape and sent it down to the uh, casting agent and uh, never thought i'd hear anything from it and the next thing you know, my phone's ringing and it's a casting agent saying, would you be able to do a little more? Uh, would you be able to do some of your act? Uh, do you know how to sing or anything like that? And I said, sure. So they asked me to sing a specific song. And yeah. uh, I don't want to release that until uh, after the movie gets uh, yeah. put out because <laughs> it's actually used in the movie. So I, uh, I sang the song and did my act. And uh, she says, that's great. Um, you may or may not be hearing back from us. Um, I'll pass it on to the producer and the director and uh so weeks went past and uh i'm sitting there eating my dinner and uh i got a call and it was uh the casting director and she said yes we'd like to do a zoom with you and the producer and the director oh well, and, uh, i said yeah i'd love to and uh, they said, well, they're ready in about 10 minutes. So I said, all right. So I hopped on Zoom and uh, I saw it was David Gordon Green and uh, Jason Blum. And oh, uh, there was another uh, Cayman, uh, I think was on there. He's an assistant director. Uh, and they asked me to do my act live for him. And they, uh, they saw it. And I did some risque uh, material that I I'm actually known for oh, okay. and uh, I, my girlfriend she was the one holding the camera for me as I'm doing it and she said that's it you ruined it you destroyed your chance uh, they're not going to want you in Hollywood for something like that I said nah it's, it's all right you know it is what it is and uh, then again they said uh, well we'll be getting back to you and then a week later phone rings it was uh, them and they said that we'd like to offer you the part can you be down in uh, North Carolina the week of September 16th through the 20th? And I said, sure, absolutely. So uh, that's how I got that part. Never left wow. my house. Uh, that's one good thing. One positive that uh, uh, <laughs> happened uh, online, not having to uh, audition in person like I normally do. Normally yeah. I have to drive uh, two and a half hours to New York City or an hour and a half to Pennsylvania and Philly to uh, try out for some parts. Ah, oh, that's very cool. So are you able to say what your exact role is in the film or is that going to be a spoiler? <laughs> well, I'm a ventriloquist. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, a, uh, in a bar. <clears throat> oh. And I can put out the name of the bar. It's a... Uh, uh, oh geez now i can't even think of the name of the bar uh, <laughs> max bar or uh uh geez i can't even think that's that's how bad i am but i'm in the bar scene and uh 
Oh, I'll move the camera up here. And uh, this is uh, the figure that I use. Oh, and that's cool, uh, my main figure, Horace. And uh, him and I have been together for years. In fact, I worked on stage at Tropicana for uh, about nine years. Oh, nice. Awesome. Uh, he's going to be in it with me. And uh, he'll be more famous than I will. <laughs> People remember him, but not me. Well, at least you get to be in a Halloween film, I suppose. Absolutely. It was probably one of the best experiences of my entire life uh, outside of having my, my two kids. That was yeah. the best. But Halloween was pretty cool. And to get to work for uh, David Gordon Green, yeah, one of the number one directors in America, he's definitely going places. And, yeah, uh, for sure. Jason Blum, great guy. And it was like a family atmosphere. They, they treated everybody very professionally and with a lot of respect. And uh, I noticed a few tricks that uh, David Gordon Green used, and he got the most out of his actors by just letting them go on um, <clears throat> with what it was they were doing at that yeah, specific yeah. time. And it was phenomenal to watch these actors work. I got to work with... Uh, uh, Kyle Richards, she was in my scene. Um, uh, trying to think of all the people because I've been through uh, so many uh, <laughs> shows since then. Um, she played Nurse Roberts. Uh, she was in the original Halloween. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah. It'll come back to me. Uh, after <laughs> <few minutes. laughs> Just uh, recovering from COVID. In fact, oh. uh, I lost a, a part in a film because uh, they were sending me to get tested for COVID. I went for uh, costume fittings because I was going to be a detective uh, in this uh, movie. And uh, it came down to testing and I tested positive for it. And I thought, eh, this can't be. But within a few days, I started getting a high fever. And, oh, wow. Uh, Sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, so on Halloween, how, many, how long did you work? How what? How long did you did it take for you to do your part? It took uh, right about five days to do the entire uh, bar scene. It was oh, actually you know. mix mix bar. It's coming to me now. <laughs> ah, okay, awesome. Um, so you just said you were going to get another role. Do you apply? Do you apply for a lot of film roles? No, I'm real selective in what I do apply for. Mostly, uh, I. I'm trying to do the horror thing just to stick with the, the horror. Yeah. But uh, not a lot of those parts come up. And when they do, they're far and few in between. Apologize for that noise. Just right away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's somebody coming in the studio. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, uh, I generally uh, get maybe two a, a month that I can actually apply for, but it's great. You can uh, usually try out for the parts right from my studio here. Uh, I'm in the uh, storage portion that has all my microphones and everything. Oh, okay. and, uh, <laughs> but uh, somebody's in there recording right now. So I, I, I couldn't use my regular studio, but it's great. That's where I auditioned from. Um, even in here, I have uh, studio lights that uh, uh, cool. <laughs> but the uh, the COVID thing even though it's a, a really bad thing and I feel bad for uh, you know a lot of people across the world that have it yeah. Um, yeah it has made entertainment a lot better because you don't have to leave your house to audition and whereas exactly. uh, I would spend 50 60 dollars to get to an audition up in New York City now I do it right from the comfort of my studio yeah, maybe it's the way forward to make things a lot easier to save, to cost, lower costs on everything, travel and whatnot. So it might be yeah. better, yeah. Um, so are you working on any personal projects at the moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually there's uh, a couple projects uh, in the works now. I, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, allergies here in New Jersey are horrible right now with the cedar trees, but uh, I don't know how they yeah. are there in the uh, UK, but... Uh, I'm doing a uh, gardening blog. Uh, my oh, production cool. company came up with a bright idea of putting together, and it's a two-phase thing. It's a gardening blog where I throw in a little stupid humor to pique peak people's interest. And uh, in, in one part, I uh, uh, 
we talk about starting chicks and raising them the chickens. Yeah. And I yeah. dress up like Colonel Sanders and do a oh. quick little thing. And that's on YouTube. And that's uh, called In the Garden with Mike Dupree, obviously. Um, but the second phase of that is we're going to try and pitch uh, to one of the networks. Um, it's sort of a home improvement take on gardening. Like uh, I'm a gardener and uh, I'm trying to put together these this homebrew gardening show that we produce <clears throat> out of my house and uh, my family members are involved. And then it works into a situation comedy Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, and that's so what we're doing, we're putting together a bunch of these little gardening videos that uh, uh, don't really amount to a whole lot, but it might bring the uh, YouTube viewership up. And uh, that's what we're hoping. <clears throat> and then from there, we'll progress into the uh, uh, pilot for this show we're working on. So that sounds really cool. It is. We've got a couple good writers uh, involved uh that i've worked with for quite a while and uh nice collab collaborators <laughs> yeah and uh, also working on uh putting together a music video uh using the song that i did in the movie halloween uh there's a specific song and i can't say what it is but yeah of course yeah uh, i'm working on <clears throat> a music video of me singing with uh, horace Oh, nice. And uh, which that he's actually created by a buddy of mine, Bill Nelson, out of Nelson Studios. He was carved by uh, uh, <clears throat> Chuck. Uh, uh, what the heck is his name? I can't remember. Anyhow, I think the, the guy had passed away, I was told. Um, <clears throat> uh, Chuck Jackson is the guy's name. Oh, OK, but great figure. <clears throat> he's uh, one of a kind, <clears throat> although there are several around and everybody confuses me with jeff dunham with the exception of how i look oh, okay. <laughs> but they see the dummy and they say oh i've seen you on tv uh, you, you might have but not where you think you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I, I did do a, a pilot for a, another tv show out of uh, new york city oh that was awesome and it was a bud Ribble show and uh, i don't know that that has hit it was supposed to be on one of them uh uh, Adult Swim, I think, was what they were shooting for. Uh, oh. But I was able to uh, act with my daughter. Uh, my daughter's also an actress. And uh, not that I'm an actress, but uh, she's also an actor, I should say. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I was lucky enough to be able to work with her in that. And that in itself was a, a great little uh, aspect of the career. And this is actually my uh, third career. <clears throat> I started out in radio at, uh, when I was in high school. And then yeah. I went to the service and still worked radio. And uh, when I got out of the service, I worked uh, as a radio announcer for the same stations for years. Uh, and then it progressed from there to uh, performing as a uh, ventriloquist for Tropicana. Oh, nice. City, which is great gig but uh yeah the movie <laughs> the movie business topped it all there was nothing like halloween uh, anthony michael hall was in it he was oh, in my scene yeah. what a great guy oh my goodness we had so much fun he uh he's a, he's a character uh, yeah, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Yo, well, halloween i suppose is something you can never imagine being part of i know you obviously you're a puppeteer but obviously it's one of those opportunities that's once in a lifetime maybe yeah, it, it, it really is. And I'm so thankful for everybody that got me involved with that. And also my buddy that gave me the heads up that they were looking for yeah. a ventriloquist yeah. that uh, could do an act and, and uh, carry a little bit of the film. And uh, I was, like I said, great people I worked with both uh, in front of the camera and behind too. They were all professional all the way. And uh, I learned a lot um by watching how they did their process yeah and it was really cool to see the behind the scenes it's one thing to see uh behind the scenes on tv where you you get to see um somebody's view of what they feel is going on behind the scenes yeah. but to actually see it yourself you learn so much about the subtle nuances that you don't see in a lot of the videos <clears throat> and documentaries on uh, behind the scenes of movies but it's it's really neat especially if you like the entertainment field and how they do little tricks and things of that nature yeah exactly that's really cool to hear i'm glad <clears throat> that your time on halloween was well um stopped you, you did 
you learn a lot from us, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you hope to achieve next or down the line? Obviously, you said <laughs> your gardening show, but what else down the line would you like to do? Well, they have another Halloween coming out, which is Halloween Ends. And oh, yeah. that's oh, yeah. supposed to be released next year. And I would love to absolutely be included in that as well. They didn't kill me off. Good. I'm a survivor <laughs> <laughs> in Halloween Kills. I'm one of the uh, few people that I'm with uh, in the scene that uh, didn't get killed off uh, <laughs> without uh, giving away anything. Uh, I wasn't killed off, so I, I guess I'm still available. Oh, very cool. <laughs> if the producers would like to include me, I'd be proud to be a part of uh, the second one. But like I said, the first one was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Exactly. That, uh, you know, I just can't say enough about and uh, great to be a part of but the second one would be a, a certainly a, a super dream come true yeah not I totally the first one yeah. wasn't but... <laughs> oh yeah it's even better to be in two isn't it than what just one it's yeah. it's like crazy yeah uh, so growing up who were some of your inspirations for ventriloquism uh of course edgar bergen with his figure charlie mccarthy yeah uh then uh Paul Winchell was a huge influence. Uh, Jay Johnson in my later years, uh, Jay was a big inspiration. <clears throat> but uh, Paul Winchell, uh, I'll pan the camera over. This is one of the Jerry Mahoney's that uh, he actually handmade oh, wow. and supposedly used in 50s television. And my very first figure uh, was a... Uh, uh, Jerry Mahoney figure uh, and I had a knucklehead Smith as well but uh, that was one of my main inspirations oh, very uh, cool. <laughs> to apologize for that All right don't worry about it <laughs> everybody wants to uh, <laughs> come into the studio today <laughs> there, that'll take care of that <laughs> but uh, yeah the uh, it, it's it's funny that back in the day, um, when I was born in the early 60s, you had Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney. Um, you had uh, uh, Danny O'Day. Uh, you had, uh, I'm trying to think of a guy in England. Um, he had Sir, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my mind is clouded <laughs> today, but um, he was one of the great, uh, performers. Uh, he had uh, the figure was always drunk, but he had a little monocle in his eye. Uh, and, uh, I wish I could remember his name, but I used to watch him. He'd show up on the Ed Sullivan show, and uh, <clears throat> there was a a bunch that uh, were out there. But then you'd never see him again, other than Paul Winchell. Paul Winchell would do uh, a bunch of cartoon voices. He did the Smurfs. Uh, oh wow. Did Gargamel from the Smurfs? He was uh, the voice of Tigger oh. in Winnie the Pooh. And if you notice, his knucklehead Smith character is Tigger's voice. Oh, the funny thing about Tigger, you know, Tigger don't like honey. <laughs> oh wow, that, you can do a very good impression. <laughs> that's knucklehead Smith and Tigger. That's where he got the the voice oh. from. But uh, he did a lot of voices and. Outside of ventriloquism, he had a really broad career uh, doing voiceovers and, and cartoon voices. And he shows up in a lot of things. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> uh, so you've mentioned two of the ventriloquist uh, dummies. What about the other two to your right? Well, uh, this one here is actually made by uh, Bill Nelson and Chuck Jackson. Right. That is actually Brant Gilmer, and that's a takeoff on uh, Mortimer Snurd from Edgar Bergen. Okay. Um, he's actually a collector figure. You, it's really when you're a professional ventriloquist, it's not good to use somebody else's figure. Um, you want to be original. Yeah. Uh, but I've got a bunch. Uh, oh, cool. Try to, <clears throat> that's my... Uh, <laughs> priest yeah <laughs> and uh he's a uh, selberg creation and uh you can still buy that that's just a generic one of his figures and uh this is a frank marshall figure here and uh 
he's from the 30s. He's the oldest figure. Wow. I and uh, I don't know if I can relate to the show, but I'm just a couple of basic figures. Oh, nice. Here. And then I have a couple other Nelson Jackson figures that aren't here in the studio. And uh, I try and uh, <clears throat> rotate in and out some of the figures so it's not the same ones all the time uh, when people come in they always like seeing them and especially if a musician comes into my studio and uh you know they they know me so they want to show their kids yeah. or whatever they bring their kids or oh, girlfriends nice. and, uh, <clears throat> the biggest thing now um i'm included in uh, imdb the website yeah and yeah. Uh, if you look up mike dupree actor uh, the IMDb will come up. You click on that, and uh, you get to see uh, a picture of uh, Horace, which uh, it's actually Mr. Horowitz, Horace Horowitz. And uh, so <clears throat> people are getting to know him more more so <laughs> than me. Uh, but the, everybody wants to see him, and they want to see him talk and uh, see what he sounds like. Uh, and then when the movie comes out, it's just going to go uh, haywire. I was warned that your life will never be the same. I live in a real small area. Everybody knows me anyhow from being yeah, on radio yeah. for years and uh, being in the community. And uh, they said, once this movie hits, you're going to have people that live, you know, hours away trying to yeah. come past your house and uh, get to meet you and want to hang with you and show up for different things. And they said, beware, because uh, it has happened to a couple of the actors. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <clears throat> and the this of movie, such a big scale movie that uh you know you have these cult followers that they live eat drink and sleep these horror movies yeah and yeah. Uh, especially halloween i've been contacted um <clears throat> by several people they offered to buy the script that i have that i was given and uh <clears throat> i i keep it in my safe and uh it's it's not going to come out until uh the movie is uh uh, released because uh, I, I can't afford to let anybody find out what's going on in that movie. It wouldn't be right. Of course, yeah, I, I totally get that. It's like ruining a birthday, a surprise birthday party. If you release any of the information about the, it's it's spoiling things for everybody. That's why uh, it's it's not a good thing to, to do. And I hate when people uh, try to turn to that, offer you money, and <clears throat> believe me, that money is not the important part. It's the uh, surprise of the movie coming out and uh, all the hard work, the actors and everybody behind the scenes put into it. that makes it a success yeah. and enjoyable to watch. But I can tell you this, this will be the most goriest Halloween to date. Oh, really? I can let that out of the bat. <laughs> wow. I'm so, I am looking forward to it. It's going to be the last it, one that came out was amazing. So it was. And uh, this steps it up quite more um, wow. it's it's hard to compare and <clears throat> to see all the hard work everybody put into it to make it have that halloween feel uh it it echoes back to an earlier time back to the original and uh, uh you know you can't say enough about the work that david gordon green yeah jason blum uh, have put into this writing it and they got everything down perfect and uh, I read through the entire script when I first got it and I was just blown away I, I thought my goodness this is definitely going wow. to be the Halloween to end all Halloweens even though there's going to be a, a final and uh, <clears throat> they're still writing it now yeah they don't have it complete and they haven't started filming yet um, but I believe that uh, they're planning on starting in uh, late August, early September, uh, if oh, wow. plans go uh, as they want. Awesome. So you actually know how this one ends and leads into the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, imagine yeah. <clears throat> it's. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I would love to be able to tell everybody, but I would not be wanting to be the person to, to ruin the the surprise for everybody yeah, yeah. and uh like i said it would be like ruin a surprise birthday party exactly, for exactly. this is it's definitely going to be worth the wait and all the hard work and special effects that they put into this and right down to the to the letter 
they they've uh, I, I watched the production and it's just astonishing how they uh, accomplished this. Yeah, I can imagine so. <clears throat> um, so obviously, you knowing, do you find it hard keeping hold of this information, or do you find it just easy? Yeah, it's uh, second nature. Uh, I would I would never uh, betray that trust in a producer or a director to release any of that information. It's just something that um, it would be ruining it for yeah. everybody, so to speak. I would never want to be that guy. And uh, um, I'm just excited as you guys are yeah. to see the final product. I saw the dailies and what they had. Um, and even, you know, raw footage was outstanding to watch. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm certainly going to be one of the first people in the, our local theaters to, to watch it. I'm not going to watch yeah. it. There was talk about it being released uh, on BOH, but uh, uh, I'll definitely go to the theater. Yeah, same. I will. I, I've had COVID, so I'm not worried about getting it anymore. And uh, so it's it's not a big deal. Exactly. And we can hope by October, everything is you know, somewhat normalized. <laughs> yeah, October 15th is the, uh, the oh, is date. It? Right. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that definitely by that time, everybody's been vaccinated. Definitely wear your masks and be vaccinated. Yes, exactly. Uh, which everybody knows that by now, uh, because you I think. want everybody to be around and alive to see Halloween kills. It's yes. <laughs> not enough. I can't say enough about it, even though I'm involved with the production. I, even if I wasn't, I would definitely recommend because I've always been a, a huge fan of the, the Halloween. Um, not all of them, but uh, yeah, well. <laughs> the first one definitely. And uh, then the subsequent ones after that were okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Rob Zombie tried doing a bang up job uh, and he did good for what he had. But David Gordon Green nailed it. I can say that with the uh, Halloween 2018. Um, before I was ever involved, I uh, I saw that at the movie theater. Yeah. And I thought, wow, what a great, and you can't even call it a remake, but uh, it's uh, in succession from the very first one. And it yeah. was so enjoyable to see, and I was so surprised. And uh, it, was, it was a perfect addition to the Halloween series. And it bypassed all the previous ones and killed off every previous version yeah of, uh, i agree Halloween's, which which actually was a good thing in a way <laughs> uh because there was <laughs> what it was a halloween three i forget which had nothing at all to do with yeah it is yeah. anything and uh you know i was a little disappointed about that but uh, nonetheless yeah. it's part of the uh the saga <laughs> exactly so just, and now a part of the recovery phase like this trilogy is going to recover everything halloween should have been Right. And, and it's done the right way. Yeah. And uh, I, I really praise the producers and the writers uh, on this. It's <laughs> it's it's great. I, I got to tell you, I can't tell you enough. Uh, you know, I, I know it's going to happen and I just can't wait to see the whole movie put yeah. together. Yeah. I, I haven't seen a lot of the uh, the parts filming, but I've seen enough that I'm just so excited. Yeah, yeah. And the, the biggest thing for me, I, when I was filming, I thought, oh, wow, it's going to come out next year. I can't wait to yeah, see yeah. it. Um, it. It's going to be great. And then when COVID came around and they postponed it, I'm like, oh, no, don't tell me. I had to wait a whole year. And now they're telling me that they're going to go another year. And I was thinking, oh, man, Two years that is as well. horrible. And I'm so on the edge of my seat wanting to see it. That's the uh, how great it was and i don't mean to sound so overly enthusiastic about it but i i, I am i'm i just can't say enough about the yeah. going to a movie theater and actually seeing it it's, it's, yeah, it's amazing it? It watching is. something growing up and then being part of something you loved as a kid never in a million years in fact uh, i've told several people um that when i watched that when i was uh, i think it was in 78 was the first one yeah, yeah. Uh, i was in eighth grade at the time i would have never thought in a million years that someday i would be tied into this somehow <laughs> but here it is 
I don't know. That's uh, how crazy life is. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask, not related to Halloween, but obviously I asked you about your inspirations. Did you grow up, uh, obviously you're a ventrilo- tre- can't say, ventriloquist. <laughs> ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> a lot you... of people have mixed that word up. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a complex word. Kind of. um, did you grow up watching um, Jim Henson? That's the name. Oh, absolutely. Jim, uh, even though he's not a ventriloquist or wasn't, um, yeah. his puppetry, it's I uh, went to kindergarten in 1969 and the show Sesame Street. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. I am, started yeah. uh, Children's Television Network. And that's what um, Jim Henson was associated with. And that's the first time I ever knew him, even though he was on the uh, the Tonight Show uh, doing his little uh, puppet uh, theater there. Yeah. I was too young to watch that. But when Sesame Street came on, And I saw the puppets. I was like, oh, my goodness, this is the absolute best. Yeah. And uh, I I watched it up until I was a senior in high school. And it wasn't for the hokiness, but I love the the puppetry involved. And uh, I met Frank Nelson, who was the count. One ringy dingy, uh, 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 two ringy dingy. And he was such a a great guy. And... uh, then we lost Mr. Carroll, who uh, played Big Bird. Yeah, uh, he yeah. passed away, uh, as did uh, Jerry Nelson passed away as well. But uh, he was so good um, as Oscar the Grouch, and all his voices—you can tell the characters that he did—they sounded pretty much the same. Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch, yeah. And, uh, yeah. But they were such good characters, and he was such a good puppeteer uh, himself. But uh, that whole project, the children's television. Uh, workshop with uh, all of Henson's puppetry and then with uh, uh, the Muppet movie when that came out yeah um, that was really a big hit uh, and I, I loved it of course uh, but getting back to the very start with the, the ventriloquist and puppets I was able to uh, pretty much overcome my form of autism that I had as a child with using puppets so right it tied into my future. And then I started doing comedy shows. And uh, here I am when I was a little kid, I was so shy and withdrawn. And here I am standing up in front of thousands of people, uh, you know, announcing and hosting different things. Uh, I used to host, uh, guest host the oldies rock and roll show uh, at one of the casinos. And um, nice, awesome. Where they brought back all the, the 50s artists and uh, that was a great time. And uh, I worked at an oldie station at that time. And uh, it was really a neat thing to do. But, oh, nice. Uh, That's really cool. Yeah. Sorry I brought that back. Uh, oh, it's cool. I like <laughs> how... Um, part, but oh, I like I'm how... The... Big... Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a big supporter of uh, Autism Speaks. And, uh, you know, I support all those groups. And uh, hopefully we can overcome that and find a cause for one. And, uh, you know, that way, everybody in the future, if we come up with a cure, won't have to worry about the different forms. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad that um, your career now is the reason you overcame such a big part of your childhood. So I'm glad there's these materials and jobs out there that can help kids, adults, teenagers, whatever it may be. Uh, absolutely. There's always an outlet of some sort that if you have a child with autism that you can steer them into that will hold their attention yeah. and actually help them be propelled to the next level and uh, hopefully overcome a, a serious uh, disability. Exactly. Yeah. Worked out for me. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, <laughs> I've had a lot of fun along the way too. met a lot of great people. Uh, it's just been a phenomenal <laughs> period of my life uh, these last five years. That's great to hear. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you one last question before we wrap it up. Um, yeah. What is, so going forward, what's the dream for you now? What would you like to accomplish? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm at the end stages of my life. I'm in my uh, mid to late fifties now. And uh, I've had my kids. That was a, a goal. Uh, I've been on stage, I performed, 
uh, sung and danced and <laughs> did all the other stuff and yeah. did my ventriloquism. But the end all really was the uh, the movie career and having a chance to be in uh, David Gordon Green's Halloween Kills. That's uh, the absolute best. And from here on out, it's coasting downhill. I'm working on my, uh, like I said, my garden blog project. Yeah. And uh, I'm still going to be putting out the garden blogs, even though we just started it uh, about a month and a half ago. We're still posting videos on a weekly basis. And I invite anybody to stop by and uh, check that out if they get a chance. And uh, then hopefully, once we get a bunch of videos canned uh, and put on, then we can go to the next phase. And that's a, a sitcom on one of the cable networks where uh oh nice like i said it's it's like the, the show home improvement but with a gardening aspect and yeah a lot of different things thrown in <laughs> but that's all i expect and <clears throat> the biggest thing is i'd like to go out and meet as many people and fans as i can uh because i love being with the people it's the people that make this worthwhile yeah and uh, that's what i'm looking forward to is getting out and, and meeting everybody that uh you know, as a fan of Halloween and uh, puppetry and patriloquism and <clears throat> and everything else, it's it's great. And, awesome! Uh, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to see that you've got um, some great things lined up, and I hope everything works out for you in the next few years. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate that, and uh, I've had a great time sitting here talking to you, spilling my guts on <laughs> stuff great. that may not interest anybody, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's been great hearing your stories and I, I'm glad you overcame such a big part of your childhood and you've been in such a great film and I look forward to watching it. So Thanks. And uh, me too. I can't wait till it comes out. And if anything else, I'll see you on Halloween. I'll see you then. <laughs> Take care then. All right. Take Thanks, care, Adam. Thanks Bye. again. No worries. Bye.